Hello, and thank you for joining us on this edition of Let's Talk to Cab. I'm Diamond Lewis. And I'm Aviva Hoffman. Well, Aviva, April is certainly an important month that impacts all of us within DeKalb County and beyond. In fact, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. So in honor of this very important month, DCTV is dedicating this entire edition of Let's Talk DeKalb to highlight many of the services and programs offered right here in DeKalb County to deal with this very important issue. That's right, Diamond. The Assistant Chief of DeKalb's Criminal Investigation Division is going to drop by to talk about some of the great work that DeKalb County's Police Department is doing to prevent child abuse and also how they're apprehending the perpetrators. We'll also have a talk with Sergeant Dave Brown. He's with the Internet Crimes Against Children Unit. They have an amazing unit. They help tell parents how to keep children safe on the Internet, but they also go after the bad guys. And I'll have an insightful interview with the Director of Prevention Services at the Georgia Center of Child Advocacy. She's going to talk to us about child sexual abuse and how parents and proud aunties like myself can work to protect our children against such heinous acts. DeKalb County's Director of the Child Advocacy Center will join us and talk about what they're doing during the month of April, but also more importantly what they do all year long. That's right, Aviva, but first we'll check in with Fatima El Almin from that same department. She's going to spotlight some of the services offered through DeKalb County's very own Child Advocacy Office, and she's going to show us how this department is working each and every day to protect some of our most vital population, our children. Thanks, Diamond and Aviva. Here at the DeKalb County Child Advocacy Center, we represent the interests of children who are alleged to have been abused and neglected. These children require the protection of the juvenile court. It's our job to advocate on behalf of each child client. This is what happened in court. This is what this means to your case. This is your next court date. So it's either myself, um, the other attorneys in our office, or our investigators that routinely go out and visit with our clients. And we make sure that they understand that we're their child advocate attorneys, I'm your investigator, and this is what we do for you. We also work hard to make sure important protections are in place for the day when a child in our system actually goes out into the world on his or her own. You have to learn there's a lot of responsibilities that come with being an adult. It doesn't matter of your age. It matters on the independence of what you do to even be called an adult. Unfortunately, a lot of these youth will not be reunified with their families. So um, in order to prepare them to transition out of the foster care system, we wanted to provide them with a group of speakers today and several vendors in the community um, that have a stake in what happens to our youth. Several speakers shared their wisdom with the attendees. A special agent from the GBI was also on hand to talk about internet predators. There are many situations young people need to prepare for once they are released from foster care and become adults. After getting out of foster care, I learned the true meaning of bills. I believe every kid, once they're a kid, wants to be an adult, but once you hit that adult stage, you want to be a kid, because I would die to be a kid and live in someone's house or whatnot, not have to pay any bills. That's all part of why the Child Advocacy Center exists to help these young people realize their power and their future. There are a lot of things, a lot of opportunities that we don't know about because we don't read or we don't ask. So if you have a problem, you need to ask. Last year, our office worked with approximately 500 youth between the ages of 14 and 17. There are so many we call these children our transitioning youth because they will soon be transitioning into adulthood. It is vitally important that transitioning foster youth have caring adults in their lives to serve as dedicated supporters and mentors. This is just a small glimpse of the important work that goes on at the DeKalb County Child Advocacy Center. Reporting from the Gregory A. Adams Juvenile Justice Center, for this special edition of Let's Talk to Cab, I'm Fatima El -Amin. Back to you, Aviva and Diamond. Thank you, Fatima, for that very insightful report. Now, we're just getting started, so stick around. Again, this whole show is dedicated to this very important topic. More Let's Talk to Cab right after this. 
Welcome back to this very important special edition of Let's Talk to Cab. We continue to dedicate this show to April, which is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. During our entire show, we continue to spotlight the many services and activities planned throughout April and honor this very important cause. Joining us here in DCTV studio is Trini Stovall. Trini is the director of the Cab County Center for Child Advocacy. Thank you so much for joining us today, Trini. You're welcome. Now, if you can first talk to us about your department and your role as director of the Cab County Center for Child Advocacy. Our office is made up of attorneys, investigators, paralegals, and administrative support who provide legal advocacy to children in foster care. We represent all of the Cab's abused and neglected children, and that's unfortunately about 1,000 children every year. Now, DeKalb County was actually the first county in the state of Georgia to create its own Center for Child Advocacy, if you can talk to us about that, and how that speaks to DeKalb County's commitment to our children. We were a number of years ago, unfortunately, there were a number of unfortunate incidents happening to children in foster care. Mm -hmm. um, there was a federal lawsuit, and from that federal lawsuit, DeKalb was very proactive and decided that they were going to do the right thing for kids. Before the lawsuit ever settled, a number of years before, they established the Office of Child Advocacy and uh, fully staffed it. And we have a comprehensive program where we take a holistic approach to addressing the needs of children in care. Children in foster care have a number of needs. It's not just abuse and neglect. Stemming from that, you have medical, mental health needs, delinquency needs, housing, and we try to bring families together. And if we can't bring those families together, we're looking for permanency. So you have to have a wide range of resources, services, and partners, quite frankly, in order to serve children in care. That's great. And if you can talk to us about some of the specific services that you offer, and specifically maybe one story that speaks to uh, how those services has impacted the life of a child here in DeKalb County. Well, um, our job as attorneys, um, primarily, and attorney support, we're unique from any other kind of law department or legal agency. We are legal social workers basically. Mm -hmm. Our attorneys go out in the field. They visit their clients in the field. We're, what's unique about us is we're the only attorneys who has a party who, who have clients who are in the custody of another party. We're not part of DFACS. We work as partners with DFACS. So what we do is um, investigate our own cases and we provide legal support and advocacy in the juvenile court system. So when a child comes into foster care and there's an effort to take that child out of the parent's home, it's our job to make a recommendation to the court and to provide a voice for that child. Legal advocacy fully participating in that process to ensure that that child's voice is heard and that child isn't lost in the system. Mm -hmm. So not only do we provide legal representation for the clients, we go beyond that. As long as a child is in the custody of the department or under the jurisdiction of the juvenile court, which could be a matter of months or a matter of years, unfortunately, our job is to ongoing ensure that that child's needs are met. So not only why, however a child comes into care, our job is to ensure that we make sure that when that child leaves foster care, that they are whole and that they have a permanent home and a permanent connection. That's wonderful. Now, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and your, your office every day works, as you said, provide a voice to the children of DeKalb County. But talk to us about the special activities and services that you have to offer for the month of April. Well, we have monthly in services every mm -hmm. single month where we bring community partners in to talk with our staff um, and our stakeholder partners and, quite frankly, any community member that wants to come to learn more about the partner systems that work with children in need and families. Um, in April, our, our uh, presenter is going to be Men Stopping Violence. Okay. They work to help families come back together after domestic violence or to become whole and uh, provide reparative services. Another one of our efforts during the month of April, we've been working quite some time on providing a holistic approach to supporting children as they leave foster care. This is our transitioning youth our population. If you think about it, a child coming into care at 14 to 17 years old unfortunately is likely to leave foster care into adulthood. And if when I was 17 and 18, right. I was in no position to be independent adult. So we send these children out into the world without adequate prepare, preparation. So we started to focus on that population and provide services to really um, address their needs and prepare them to be independent and to thrive as adults. We realized that we could not do that on our own, and in April we'll kick off our first advisory panel um, gathering or convening of all of our partners to really 
talk about what we need to do as a county and as a community to serve this population of a couple of hundred children who foster, who transition into adulthood every year and can't go back to the families who left them in foster care. So that's probably our biggest kickoff during the month of April. I'm really excited about that and looking for the community support to support this youth. That's wonderful, Trini, but certainly you and your staff can't do it alone. Are there volunteer opportunities that our viewers might be able to offer and help out your department because you have such a noble and such a great cause for the children of DeKalb County? There are volunteer opportunities. Now, first and foremost, there is CASA, the CASA organization, which has been in existence in CAP for, DeKalb for many years. They have a very formalized program whereby volunteers can get special training to advocate for one child at a time in court. You're not serving as an attorney, you're serving as a voice for that child to really um, ensure that that child's voice is heard and that their needs are identified throughout their time in care. We have recently started to partner with community volunteers to work with that special transitioning population, that 14 to 17. What we started to find out is there are a lot of resources and opportunities um, from government resources that are geared to them to private funding and tr private services geared to helping teens to um, have enrichment and support as they, as they get training and get prepared to uh, transition into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Our kids weren't getting that support. They couldn't fill out the applications. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anybody to take them to the programs. There were money set aside for programs in the summer that they couldn't access. So what we have started to do is develop a coalition of volunteers who can come and work one-on-one -on -one with our kids very short periods of time to help them fill out the application that your mom would have made you sit down and fill right. out and helped you to answer those, those general questions about what, how is this going to affect your life. Our kids don't get access to that to help them identify um, the services or the support that gets them uh, transportation sure. to these programs. Mm -hmm. It's very basic things and our foster youth are losing out because they don't have that basic support. So that's the, that is the primary uh, effort that we are focusing on now, really getting the community and volunteers involved mm -hmm. with helping our youth transition because quite frankly, there are peers in a matter of months. There are adults just like us without any services and support. We can't expect them to thrive if we don't help them. Right, and then how can our viewers contact your office? Um, you can go to our website or you can reach us at 404-297-3401. Trini, thank you so much to you and your team for all the wonderful work you're doing here in DeKalb County. Thank you. Much more on this edition of Let's Talk DeKalb. Stay with us. Welcome back to Let's Talk to Cab, and we continue talking about what the county is doing to prevent child abuse. Joining us now is Assistant Chief Annette Williams of the Criminal Investigation Division with the Cab County Police Department. Thank you so much for being on our show for this very special month of April. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, why is month of April so important to the DeKalb County Police Department? What is your department doing to promote awareness of this special month? Protecting all our kids and addressing all forms of child abuse is paramount for DeKalb County. And protecting our kids is top priority here in DeKalb County. So we want to use this platform to get out and talk to our community and reach out and make them aware of this being the um, awareness month. It might be a double-edged sword that these issues are coming about and it's needed. It's kind of almost sad that this occurs at all. But the good news is that the DeKalb County Police Department is really tackling this problem and working very hard to prevent child abuse. What kind of resources is at, are at your disposal for this? What we realized is that we had to come even more specialized and that's when we implemented our ICAT unit. And ICAT is Internet Crime Against Children. Uh, it's something that we've been, we've been investigating these types of crime for some time now, but uh, we now have a dedicated unit for that, and that's staffed by one sergeant and three detectives, and they work that unit full time. And recently, we received over $500,000 uh, funding from a COPS grant through the U.S. Department, US Department of Justice. So that funding will allow us to uh, receive specialized training, purchase equipment that we need to investigate these types of crimes. What kinds of penalties or punishment do some of these bad people face? All that de just depends on uh, the, the history, the severity of the crime. You can get anywhere from seven to ten years and sometime more just depend on you know. Very crime, serious crime, crime and very yes. serious punishment. That's right. Now we're going to continue looking at what the DeKalb County Police Department is doing to stop and prevent child abuse. This spotlight comes from Mika Parrish. 
Thanks, Aviva. We wanted to give you an inside look on the steps that ICAC detectives take to get suspected predators off the street. Today, we rode along as they executed a search warrant at this Tucker home. The man inside is suspected of having child pornography. Within hours of receiving tips, detectives walked into the home armed with a search warrant. Inside, the person they were looking for. And it did not take long before they walked out with a 28-year-old in handcuffs. The evidence found by detectives, pornographic images on electronics. Uh, right now we're still going through it. Um, obviously we've got phones and uh, data cards uh, that are used inside phones and cameras and things of that nature. Um, all that's going to be later analyzed um, using some of the tools that we have for that. Also uncovered during the search, signs that a child lived inside with his mother. Although there are no obvious indications the child was being abused, a forensic analysis of the evidence will help make a final determination. Is this quest to identify children in harm's way that Detective Harden says is a crucial reason why, when they find out information about possible offenders, they move swiftly to investigate. You never know what you're going to walk into. For all we know, that particular person is currently abusing a child as we speak. So we want to get those tips, get the information, and move as quickly as we possibly can in the event that there is a current child continually being uh, abused. According to the seasoned investigator, it does not matter if someone has one or 100 inappropriate images of a child in their possession. It's all exploitation and a crime. Well, in our opinion, I mean, any amount of significant child pornography is, is it's the extreme, in my opinion, of of a, of a way to abuse a child. It will be continually abused over and over for the rest of their lives because a picture lasts forever. Detective Harden has one lasting image he wants to convey to the community about the devastating and lasting impact pornography has on children. If you were to take one picture, put it on the internet, within 20 minutes, a million people could have seen it. So every time that picture is seen, that same child is re-abused every single time. That child's gonna grow up knowing that they were videoed, they were pictured of, the, of something that they wanted no part of to begin with. And every time that comes up, they're gonna, they're gonna remember that. So they're victimized every single time it happens. Today's arrest is another notch in the belt of the ICAC unit as they work to get child predators off the streets. It's an example of the strides they're making to help keep the children of DeKalb County safe. Mika Parrish, Let's Talk to Cab. Thank you, Assistant Chief Williams, for being on our show today and kind of highlighting a little bit about what the DeKalb County Police Department does day and night to help prevent child abuse. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you. You're welcome and thank you. Now stay with us because we're continuing this special edition of Let's Talk to Cab. And coming up, we'll find out a little bit more about what the state is doing to prevent child abuse. That's coming up. Hello and thank you for tuning in to this edition of Let's Talk to Cab. Well, again, we're observing April, which is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Joining us now for this segment here in the DCTV studios is Tiffany Sawyer. Thank you so much for joining us, Tiffany. Thank you for having me. Now, Tiffany, you're the Director of Prevention Services for Georgia Center for Child Advocacy. Mm -hmm. So first, if you can talk to us about that center and exactly what services your office offers in an effort to um, help out with child abuse prevention and awareness in sure, Georgia. Sure, sure. Um, so we, our role is to champion the needs of children who've been sexually or physically abused in DeKalb or Fulton counties. And so we provide intervention services as well as therapy services for those children. Um, but what we're talking about this month, we also provide prevention services and that's for the entire state of Georgia. Um, so what we want to do is promote prevention and let every everyone know that everybody in the community has a role in protecting a child from sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And we talked earlier about what a child predator looks like. They mm -hmm. don't have tin heads and wear right. a monster costume. So if you right. can talk to us about what exactly does a child predator look like? Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't have a target on their head as we wish that they would. Um, this is somebody, about 90% of the time, this is somebody that the child knows, that they love, that they trust, and that has um, started a relationship with the child. And a lot of times these predators um, set up the child. We talk a lot about grooming at our office. They groom children. They groom the family to set up a situation um, where they can take advantage of that child. So it's not the stranger in a trench coat hanging out in the park waiting to abduct children for the majority of the time. That does happen but 
the majority of the time it's somebody that's in the community that could be an upstanding person in the community, but we don't want to talk about it. It's a taboo subject, and so um, that's what allows these predators c to continue doing what they're doing. Well, that's what's so interesting. Oftentimes, parents tell their children, mm -hmm. don't go toward a stranger. Right. So then what tips would you offer a parent to help them in making sure they can identify with someone who may be a cousin or a mm -hmm. friend who they're familiar with, but mm -hmm. realize that sometimes there's something they may be aware, they need to be aware of? Right. We want to make sure that parents are starting a conversation with children and that they're starting it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. As early as they can, telling them the correct terminology for body parts, and I know that can be a hard thing for parents to do, um, but talking to them about that no adult and no, no, nobody in general, even other children, should not be touching them in places that are private. So these can be areas that are covered by a bathing suit. That's something that children know. They understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but if any, anybody makes them feel uncomfortable in any way, they should come and tell an adult right away. And this should be a conversation that parents are having frequently. It's not a one-time conversation, let's have the talk. Mm -hmm. It's something that they need to be having often so that children feel comfortable coming and telling them when something happens. Now Tiffany, how prevalent is child abuse and child sexual abuse here in mm -hmm. Georgia? We know that one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused before the age of 18. So if you think about a typical classroom of kids, it's roughly 20% of that child classroom. Um, so it's a devastating number. Um, and we know that if, if there were any other kind of thing happening in our community, if kids were getting run over at the bus stop at that rate, we would be doing something. We would, you know, we would take a stand for this and we would not let this happen in our community. And so the same thing needs to happen around child sexual abuse. Right. We always hear that our children are our future and that is mm -hmm. indeed the case. Mm -hmm. So how does this type of abuse impact our overall society? Well, it's linked to so many things in our society, and research is showing that more and more. Um, it's linked to drug and alcohol abuse wow. um, as a coping mechanism at, in later years. It's linked to even health issues like obesity, heart disease, um, fibromyalgia, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's linked to a lot of other things in society, teen pregnancy. Um, we know that it can be linked to homelessness. About 60% of homeless women have been sexually abused. Um, as children. Uh, so the more that we can focus on the root cause, if we can eliminate child sexual abuse, think about all of the other things in society that we could decrease as a result. Um, and it's really important that we're focusing on stopping it from happening mm -hmm. at the beginning. Now your office services both DeKalb and Fulton counties mm -hmm. and there's a joint coalition mm -hmm. I understand. There is. If you can talk to us about that joint coalition and what types of services and um, activities that your office is offering sure. in order to stop abuse within our communities. Sure, sure. So we have a great v group of uh, um, organizations that have come together in both DeKalb and Fulton counties um, and we meet on a monthly basis to talk about what we can do in our communities to provide prevention education to other agencies. We know that children don't just go from home to school and then back. Right. They're in so many, involved in so many other programs and we want to make sure that every environment that a child steps into is a safe one. So this group of organizations and volunteers, community leaders have come together and we try to reach out to these youth serving organizations, faith based organizations, mm -hmm. educational programs. If you think of any program that serves a child, we want to reach out to them and see how we can train staff and volunteers and parents to learn what they can do to prevent abuse from happening. Right, and then what can DCTV viewers or just an adult watching this program, what can we do to get involved and try to help stop this type of abuse against our children? Absolutely. Well, I think one of the first things is they can get trained and they can they can go to our website and get that information of an upcoming training or they can schedule a training for their organization, for their little neighborhood association if it's a group of parents. Um, but to get trained. The other thing is, is that we want to let parents know that they have the right to ask questions of an organization that might be serving their children. So when they're signing their child up for camp or for daycare or for something like that, ask questions. What policies do you have to protect my child from abuse? How do you screen your staff? Mm -hmm. um, and those are questions that sometimes parents feel like they have a hard time asking. Um, 
eventually we would love to, for every organization to have training and um, become a partner in prevention. Mm -hmm. If an organization trains 90% of their staff and volunteers, they can apply for a partner in prevention seal. And so hopefully if we have enough of those, parents can start looking for those seals and think, this is a great place for my child to be. And we want every place in DeKalb County to be one of those. That's wonderful. And of course, again, April is uh, the observation of prevention mm -hmm. against sexual abuse mm -hmm. of our children. Mm -hmm. But if you can talk to us about some of the ongoing services your office offers. Sure. You talked to me a little bit earlier about forensic um, yeah. investigations with our children. So if you can talk to us about what happens when unfortunately the prevention doesn't work and a mm -hmm. child has been sexually abused. Yeah. So those are really critical services that we provide. So when a, um, a child discloses abuse to someone and that case is reported to either defects or law enforcement, we work very um, well with those agencies and they bring the child to our office to have a forensic interview, which is really critical. We want to minimize the number of times that a child has to tell that unfortunate story. Um, we want to minimize the trauma that they experience from having to tell that story. So if they can tell that story one time to a trained forensic interviewer and that's video recorded and then that can be used in the investigation and in prosecution if it does go, then that's the best scenario for the child. We also provide free therapy for any child that was abused mm -hmm. in DeKalb or Fulton counties and we want to make sure that they have that ongoing experience that they can heal from this because we know only about 10 to 12 percent of children come forward as children to tell this story. So we have a lot of adults who have not been able to get that therapy and get that healing um, and, and to speak out to adults that it's never too late to go and seek treatment for this because it's something that you know we need to start talking about. Right. Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us. And for any of our viewers who may want to contact you directly sure. or your office, can you provide us with your contact information? Sure, sure. Um, we, we can be reached on the web at www.georgia, all spelled out, centerforchildadvocacy.org, or they can call 678-904-2880, and we can be reached there. Um, we do have an upcoming event that I would love Wonderful. to talk about. Um, Marilyn Vanderbur is um, a former Miss America many years ago, back in the 1950s, I believe, okay. and um, she is a survivor of child sexual abuse, actually wow. incest by her father. Mm -hmm. She is coming here and speaking on April 26th at a luncheon that we are hosting, and we, it's open to the entire community. We're selling tickets for it, and we would love to have many people there because she's a phenomenal speaker, and she's the type of person that can um, really help somebody that might be struggling with abuse and not able to talk about it. So we would love to have a lot of people from the community come. That's wonderful. Thank you so much Thank for all you. the good work that you're doing, Tiffany Thank Sawyer. You. We certainly appreciate that. And please stick around right here on Channel 23 for more information on Let's Talk to Cab. Coming up after the break, we'll find out how your children can surf the World Wide Web and be safe while doing so. Stick around. Welcome back to Let's Talk to Cab. And we just talked about what the state is doing to prevent child abuse. Now we're joined by Sergeant Dave Brown with the DeKalb County Police Department. He works in the Internet Crimes Against Children Unit. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Aviva. All right, it's good to have you on, Sergeant Brown, because you. just the fact that your unit exists is pretty telling of our times, right? Absolutely. We've only been operating for a short while. Uh, we've been operating for five months, and in those five months, we've made leaps and bounds. There's four detectives in the unit, myself and three other detectives, and each of us are specifically trained to conduct cybercrime investigations. What kind of investigations? What are you, who are the people you're going after? We focus on online child exploitation. I think the more common way to put it is we're out there looking for child predators who operate online. In, in today's times with technology, uh, predators don't necessarily have to go um, lurking through the bushes anymore. They can meet children and teens online. You're not just sitting in front of a computer catching the bad guys, so to speak. You do a lot of educational outreach and you have um, information about maybe what parents should be thinking about. Yes, we do um, numerous educational uh, presentations uh, to community groups, churches, and um, we're always happy to answer any questions and just help anybody we can. Um, oftentimes we get questions from parents uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. They'll call up to us or approach us. And uh, you know we, we appreciate those questions because we want to get that out there. 
um, that one tip may be the difference and okay. stopping one more child from being exploited. And what is perhaps the one most important thing that parents can be doing to protect their children? There are tips that we want to provide to parents. For example, keep your computer in a common room. By no means do we suggest allowing your child to have a computer secluded in their bedroom uh, without being monitored. Another tip is to know who your children are friends with on social networking sites. Social networking sites are sites like Facebook and MySpace. Now studies have showed the vast majority of children use this. Oftentimes even when the parents don't even know it. And sometimes even when there's not a computer at home. How is that possible? Well they'll get on at school or they'll mm -hmm. use their friend's uh, computer or even their friend's cell phones they can get on these sites That's now. right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I've heard of some parents that kind of take on a different persona and then friend their kids. Absolutely. It, what do you think about that? There's also a dilemma that's a little bit um, not so forthcoming, but what do you yes. think about that? It would be on a uh, individual basis and only the parent truly knows if it is the appropriate action to do. There are times when that is in fact appropriate and we would suggest that. At a bare minimum, we suggest that at least have your own social networking uh, profile such as Facebook and MySpace and be friends with your child so you can see their wall postings, see who they're interacting with. Um, have that communication with your child, that is key. And when you're communicating with your child, make sure to advise them that their profiles is set to private. They only need to be friends of friends. They don't need it public and open and by no means even filter it to where you can friends of friends can see your wall postings if that makes sense. Right. You only want it directly friends of friends. We suggest that the parent know each of those friends and not that they just be random strangers. Mm -hmm. um, no, we also suggest that you know your child's username and password so if at times you need to read their private messages you can do that which of course parents have the right to. Well, you know, we may have some parents at, at home that say oh well that that's not a problem I don't see it it's not my kids and it's no one I know but why don't you tell us about in the short five months or a few months that your unit has been in operation what's been going on in only five months of us being in operation we've made 28 arrests now that staggering number has even surprised us and I think it's indicative of just how much of it is happening on the internet Right, okay. Now, yeah. let's say, um, you know, we're doing just a brief interview today, but I know there's so much more information that needs to be shared. What if a parent has a specific question or, or a lead on something that they've seen that's a little bit, you know, if they want to report something, what, how would they contact your unit? We, we absolutely want them to contact us. Um, please, if you have any questions, contact the DeKalb Internet Crimes Against Children Unit. We're happy to reach out, answer any questions, and investigate any situation. Oftentimes I feel that um, parents may be kind of embarrassed at what's going on in the home. They don't need to feel like that. Um, feel open and free to call us. Our number that you can reach us anytime is 770-724-7710. Seven seven one zero. All right, so, y'all yeah. do very good work. We appreciate you being on our show, Sergeant Brown. And we want you to yeah. stay with us because when we come back, we will recap all of our guests and information about how you can contact and find out more. And we'll have that number again that Sergeant Brown gave us. And remember, child abuse is preventable. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much again for tuning in to this edition of Let's Talk to Cab. We hope you've learned a lot of information about how you can not only help to observe April, which again is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, but also how you can help to protect our children all year round. Now if you'd like more information on any of the services or departments featured on this special edition of Let's Talk to Cab, here's all the information you'll need to do just that. If you want to find out more about some of the things we've talked about, be sure to check out these websites and contact information. You can reach the DeKalb County Child Advocacy Center by phone at the main number 404-294-2646 or visit the center. It's located on the third floor of the Gregory A. Adams Juvenile Justice Center. That's at 4309 Memorial Drive in Decatur. And of course, the emergency police number is 911. But if you need to reach the DeKalb County Police Department for a non-emergency matter, you can call them at 678-406-7929 or 
406-7930. And you can reach the DeKalb County Police Department's website from the county's homepage at dekalbcountyga.gov. And if you need to know more about the Georgia Center for Child Advocacy, which helps children heal through prevention, intervention, and treatment, visit the website georgiacenterforchildadvocacy.org. That's all one word. You can also call the center at 678-904-2880. And remember, you can give us your thoughts on this show or any of the other programming you see here on DCTV Channel 23. Simply shoot us an email at dctv at dekalbcountyga.gov. And you can also call us, and that number is 404-371-2989. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube. That channel is youtube.com slash DeKalbCountyGov. That's DeKalbCountyGov. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Let's Talk DeKalb. I'm Diamond Lewis. And I'm Aviva Hoffman. And we look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Let's, Let's Talk DeKalb. DeKalb.